I have been posting videos on YouTube for almost 10 years now, which first of all is wild to think about, but a pillar of my content throughout those 10 years has always been drugstore makeup. You know, I consider myself a bit of a drugstore aficionado. I love the drugstore, I always have. That's where I got my start in beauty. I would buy exclusively drugstore makeup. And it's really been a hallmark of my channel throughout my time here on YouTube, you know? I have posted any drugstore video you can think of. I've probably posted, I've done about a million, du million dupes videos, side-by-side -side comparisons, roundups, best of the drugstore, splurge versus save, like you name it, I have filmed it. But something I've noticed after posting about drugstore makeup for so many years is that, at least anecdotally, I've observed a shift from my viewers when it comes to their appetite for drugstore makeup. And while we could make the argument that that could be explained by a variety of different factors, my own anecdotal experience does back up what the numbers are suggesting in terms of consumer habits when it comes to drugstore versus high-end. High-end makeup is outpacing drugstore makeup in terms of growth and sales. And I think there are a few very distinct reasons for this and I want to break them down today in Makeup Musings. <laughs> So in typical makeup musings fashion, we're gonna be doing a full face of drugstore makeup to fit in with the theme today. So the primer that I just used was the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. And now for foundation, we're gonna grab this one. This is the CoverGirl, this is like one of the most expensive foundations at the drugstore, but it is the CoverGirl Simply Ages Skin Perfector Essence. Also, you might be thinking, okay, am I losing my mind? Am I flip-flopped? Cause it probably looks like it on camera if you watch a lot of my videos. Normally, I'm sitting on that side of the room, but um, um, a challenge with filming with natural light is on some beautiful days like today where it's extra sunny, sometimes the lighting is too much. And as I kept trying to film in my typical spot, which is on the other side of the window, it was like too bright. Everything, like there was, there was no adjusting it. You were not gonna be able to see anything. So we're on the other side of the room and therefore it looks like you're viewing this in the mirror reversed, but you're, not, but you're not. So this foundation I have in the shade three, I could honestly wear three or two. It's a pretty adaptable um, range because it's not like highly pigmented, but I like to take this first on the back of my hand and then kind of break the little beads that are in here before applying it to the skin. And this is probably the only foundation in my entire collection that I like to apply with a brush over a sponge. I'm normally so team sponge, but this formula in particular is, uh, it works a bit better with a brush. So going back to my sentiments on prestige beauty versus mass. Now I'm gonna use these words interchangeably, prestige, prestige meaning high-end or luxury makeup. We're gonna categorize all of that together and then mass referring to drugstore. So I, I might use those terms interchangeably here. And also note, I will also be bundling in inexpensive brands that are not necessarily sold in brick and mortar stores at the drugstore. We'll categorize them under that mass or drugstore price tag for the sake of this video. So when we look at beauty sales from the prestige angle, it's been growing pretty rapidly since 2020. Year over year, we're seeing consistent growth, but that's not equally reflected in mass makeup sales. So Yahoo Finance notes that the prestige beauty industry category saw revenue growth of 9% year over year in Q1. And in comparison, mass market beauty, typically drugstore brands, grew by 2% in the same time period. Consulting firm McKinsey predicts that higher priced tiers in beauty retail will grow faster than lower priced tiers between now and 2028. And in theory, one might imagine that drugstore makeup should or would be outperforming high-end in terms of growth. Considering so many people are experiencing financial hardships, you might make the assumption that drugstore should be doing better than high-end, but that's not reflected in the numbers, which has left me thinking a lot about why. When in theory, drugstores should be doing great. Well, I have three key reasons that I think illustrate this. And the first one is not what you would think, but it's dupes. In 2024, I have heard coined as the year of dupes. I kept joking throughout the year, we were getting like the dupification of beauty. Every new launch from the drugstore, and you know, I'm speaking in hyperbole here, but seemingly every new launch is a dupe. It's rarely an original product, a new idea, any type of innovation. It is simply a more accessible version of the previously very popular high-end counterpart. And you might be thinking, Kelly, why would that be a negative to the drugstore? Especially considering so many brands have been highly successful coming out with dupes. We'll use e.l.f. 
for example, because they're really um, positioning themselves as a dupe brand these days. In 2023, this, this product right here that we will use later, the um, Halo Glow, this was Elf's most popular, best-selling product of the entire year. They did an entire Super Bowl ad around this one singular product because it was such a high performer for them. And so you're probably hearing that and thinking, okay, dupes are a reason these drugstore brands are doing well. And while I would imagine that is partially the case, I think there are a lot of drawbacks to a lot of these drugstore brands positioning themselves as dupe brands. Starting with the idea that every brand trying to dupe the popular product only further reinforces the desire to own said popular product. You know, the dupe is reinforcing the idea that this is such a sought after product that people are getting their hands on it any way that they can, even if it's simply the alternative of it. And the constant comparison with these drugstore brands and their dupe products inevitably positions that drugstore brand as being the alternative. You know, they're not seen as presenting unique offerings on their own. Instead, they're just presenting an opportunity to buy the cheaper alternative. Business of Fashion writes, the dupe craze isn't hurting and may even be helping prestige beauty. For the most part, consumers traded up rather than traded down last year, Prestige sales reached 27 billion in 2022, up 15% from 2021, while mass sales grew 4%. But I think a lot of these once revered drugstore brands have almost forfeited their own unique identity in the pursuit of duping these high-end and luxury hero products. And this lack of creativity results in drugstore brands almost having to play catch up instead of actually driving any new innovation in the beauty industry. This is something I've observed in my own comments. Anytime I mention e.l.f. in particular, I hear the really consistent feedback that you want to see e.l.f. come out with new products that are not dupes. So many of you have told me that you feel almost a fatigue from just the constant duping of products and it takes away the excitement that you previously had for a lot of new drugstore launches. But now for blush, we're gonna use two different dupes. I'm actually gonna mix these together to create my blush. So first I'm gonna take a little bit of e.l.f.'s dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury um, Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is their Halo Primer. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of that because I wanna add a glow to my blush. And then this blush they came out with to dupe the Rare Beauty blushes. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that again on the back of my hand. This is in the shade Peach Perfect. And then I'm gonna mix these two together so that now I have a slightly more glowy version of that liquid blush. How do you feel about dupes when it comes to beauty? Have they taken some of the steam out of your excitement for new beauty launches? Or do you like seeing drugstore brands come out with dupes? Because I recognize there are so many pros to dupes. like. Clearly I'm using quite a few today. Like I said, dupe videos have been a consistent topic on my channel for the entire time that I've been on YouTube. I love being able to showcase different dupes, but even the way that dupes look today has evolved greatly. They used to be rather covert. You couldn't necessarily look at a product and immediately identify it as being a dupe. They didn't have identical, almost knockoff packaging of the high-end counterpart the way that they do today. You know, part of the reason I used to love making dupe videos was that previously dupes were something you had to actively seek out. They weren't screaming in your face that they were intended to be a dupe. It was almost like this very serendipitous moment that you just stumble upon it and you're like, wait, this is just like this product. I have to make a video and tell the internet about this because wow, what a fantastic find. But today dupes are incredibly intentional and it's represented in the packaging. You see it and you immediately know what it is supposed to be mimicking. So first and foremost, I think dupes have played a very significant role in the shifting landscape at the drugstore. But the second point I wanna to discuss today is a shift in consumer shopping habits. So people don't shop in store anymore. And that's a huge generalization, I know, but I would love to hear from you the last few beauty products that you purchased. How did you purchase them? Did you go in store or did you buy them online? Were they impulse purchases or were they things that you really planned for, researched, and then bought? But we've observed this shift at the drugstore because of the way that consumers are shopping in 2024. McKinsey shows that e-commerce represents the largest portion of beauty sales. And in terms of in-store shopping, drugstore retailers are growing at a slower rate than in-person specialty stores like Sephora. Not only has there been a huge shift away from brick and mortar stores to online shopping, but even the in-store experience at a drugstore looks completely different today than it did 10 years ago. So previously you could make the argument that maybe 10 years ago, drugstore makeup was more accessible. And I'm even speaking outside of price point, like I'm just talking about the products, getting your hands on them. 
Drugstore used to be more accessible. You know, you could walk into the pharmacy while you're going to pick up your prescription, and while you're heading to the back to go to the pharmacy section, you might have passed the makeup aisle, discovered a drugstore mascara you hadn't tried, and thought, okay, you know what? Let me grab that. It's only $7. Let me add it to my cart. It's a relatively low risk purchase because it's at a lower price tag. And you might feel pretty incentivized to make that impulse purchase. You know, considering that same time frame again, assuming this is maybe 10 to 15 years ago, obtaining a high-end product required a little bit more effort. Online shopping wasn't yet as mass adopted as it is today. And so to obtain a high-end makeup product, you might have to go into a department store, a Sephora, an Ulta, and this wouldn't be something you accidentally stumble upon. It would be a very intentional trip to that retailer to purchase that product. You know, I even think of myself, I grew up in a very small town. At the time, we didn't have Ulta or Sephora, so the only access that I had to buying beauty products was at the drugstore. But now with the popularity of online shopping, high-end beauty products are debatably more accessible to the consumer than drugstore products. Consider the retailer Sephora. Here where I live in the US, they offer free shipping with no minimum purchase. That's rarely the case if you're buying drugstore makeup from a drugstore retailer online. All you have to do is join their Beauty Insider program and this perk is available at any tier regardless of your status at Sephora. All you have to do is sign up for the free program and everyone gets free shipping. Even considering the foundation that I'm wearing right now, this one from CoverGirl retails for just about $22. And first of all, Another obstacle to even admit here is that you can't buy this on CoverGirl's website. They don't sell makeup on their website. You then need to seek out a retailer that sells this. And yes, you could use Ulta, purchase it from there, but let's just take that out of the equation and say you're purchasing from an online drugstore. Obviously it's gonna vary by retailer, but inevitably you will probably be paying a shipping fee for this. And let's assume that's anywhere from $5.99 to $7.99. Okay, well at that point, this $22 foundation, which was already rather expensive, is now about a $30 foundation. Okay, let's compare that to a foundation you could buy at Sephora, the Rare Beauty Skin Tint that retails for $30, and then you don't have to pay shipping on top of it. Well, now at this point, the two products are essentially a wash when you're considering price. What's the consumer going to choose? The drugstore product? or the high-end product. Previously, to compare the two, drugstore makeup versus high-end, there were more obstacles in obtaining high-end makeup than there were drugstore products, but now it's the opposite. Let's even consider the in-store obstacle of most drugstores having makeup products behind a closed door, where you have to then seek out the help of someone at the store to open the door for you to then get your product. Business of Fashion touched on this pretty extensively in a recent article titled, Beauty Behind Bars. They say, we have to wait for store employees to jailbreak our body wash, turning a 10 second drugstore trip into a 10 minute chore. The process makes impulse buys less likely since the novelty of what if has more time to fade. And let us know down below how this has shifted the way that you shop and if it's changed and even potentially decreased the amount of drugstore makeup that you're consuming. You know, I think about even the idea of going in and picking up a prescription is becoming less and less common. There are a ton of services where that can be delivered to your home. Once again, omitting the possibility for that impulse purchase while you're in the store because you're not in the store. But that will bring us to key point number three, the increased price of drugstore makeup. I know minutes ago I used the example of this foundation, but it's a pretty extreme example. You know, this is almost $22. It is far more expensive than a lot of foundations at the drugstore, but I do think it's reflective of the general trend we've seen in drugstore pricing. These numbers no longer make me flinch the way they did a few years ago because they're becoming increasingly more common. By the way, that was the e.l.f. Halo Glow. I love this powder. And for bronzer, I'm gonna grab the NYX Buttermelt Bronzer. But what I think is interesting and surprisingly I hear discussed pretty infrequently is that High-end prices are rising at a pretty similar rate, if not outpacing the rise in prices we're seeing at the drugstore. You know, sometimes they're rising by way of actual price increases going up, or they're simply rising by the product still remaining the same price, but including significantly less product. I recently came across a really interesting Substack article by writer Gina Vo that she titled The Short End of the Lipstick, where she included a lot of graphics that illustrate just how widespread this is becoming. Starting with the shrinkflation conversation, the one that we see highlighted so often is of course this one from Milk Makeup. Their cream stick cheek products 
have always retailed for $24, but they used to include one ounce of product and now they only include 0.21 ounces, which is a 79% shrinkage. The new Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes are a 33% shrinkage. The House Labs blushes, 57% shrinkage for the same amount of product. And the products that have not shrunk have still inevitably increased in pricing anywhere between two and seven dollars. So if both tiers, you know, mass and prestige are both increasing their prices, why is drugstore feeling the weight of this so much more? I think a lot of that lies in the perceived value from the consumer. I think it's easier to convince a consumer that a two, three, four dollar increase in a prestige value product is worth it over a potentially even smaller margin of a price increase at a drugstore product. There's a belief from consumers, whether real or inflated, that higher price tag beauty products are worth it more than drugstore products. You know, whether it's even true or not, the consumer has this imagined idea that it's naturally gonna be higher quality ingredients because it is more expensive. When that's not always reflected in the formula. Sometimes it is, but I don't think that's a hard and fast rule. Sanja Nam Joshi writes for the Michigan Journal of Economics. Consumers often assess the worth of a product or service based on external reference points. Consider the pricing strategy employed by luxury brands such as Rolex or Louis Vuitton. By setting exorbitant prices for their products, these companies establish a high anchor, which subsequently enhances the perceived value of their offerings. Even if the consumer does not possess perfect information about the intrinsic qualities of these products, the presence of a high price tag is enough to make them believe that the products carry a sense of prestige and exclusivity. And even as we've watched these drugstore products increase their quality, improve their packaging, and in many cases are almost indistinguishable from their high-end counterparts, a lot of consumers still don't feel that they're worth it because the perceived value is still not there for many consumers based on the simple fact that they are still drugstore products. And I also know, speaking from my own perspective, shoppers like beautiful things. I love having a beauty product that looks nice in my makeup bag or on my vanity. Even if the formula is essentially identical to another drugstore product in my collection, I am still more likely to reach for the product that looks more beautiful. And as these drugstore prices continue to rise, I think it's increasingly challenging for these brands to convince consumers that the price increase is worth it for a drugstore product. I mean, just scrolling through the Ulta website, it's not unusual to see drugstore foundations priced 17, 18, $19 and higher. Like I said, we've got the CoverGirl one at almost 22. When a lot of times for a few dollars more, or even after you've again, factored in the shipping price, you actually could just go buy a high-end product. And I think of so many of these more, I'm gonna call them mid-range brands or brands that are on the lower end of the cost scale for high-end. So I'm thinking Rare Beauty, Tower 28, REM. These brands have products that are now priced pretty similar to drugstore makeup. So once again, the consumer sees that and thinks, okay, for two to three dollars more, I could go buy this from Rare Beauty or REM or About Face. You know, we've got the Tower 28 Lip Softies at $16 or the REM Lip Gloss at $17. Well, look at similar lip gloss and lip treatments at the drugstore. They're regularly $11, $12, $13, $14. Dollars. That was the New Heights Mascara from Ulta Beauty Collection. I love this mascara so much. And then on my eyes, I'm wearing the Pixi Endless Shade Stick. I wear this all the time. For lips, this is one of my absolute favorites, drugstore or high-end. This is the CoverGirl Outlast Lip Liner Stain. I have the shade 10. And top that with another dupe, the NYX Fat Oil Slick Click Balm. And between dupes, a shift in consumer shopping habits, and overall price increases, the drugstore landscape has completely evolved in recent years to the point that I would make the argument that drugstore doesn't really exist anymore, at least not the way that it did previously. Drugstore products are now elevated in a way that's very exciting. You know, I remember a time when there was a pretty stark difference between the drugstore and high-end, and it was a challenge to find good makeup at the drugstore. I don't believe that's the case anymore. Drugstore makeup is consistently as high quality as high-end makeup for the most part. And yet, despite that, it seems to be less sought after by consumers these days, which leads me to you. I'm so curious to hear your thoughts on drugstore makeup and if your shopping has shifted in recent years. 
Are you buying more high-end? Are you buying less high-end? Do you love the dupification of beauty? Or do you think it's been the downfall of the drugstore? Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have my full makeup musings playlist linked and I will see you in my next one. Bye.